What's going on, everybody? It is March 22nd, Thursday slate. We've got six games and an oddly interesting amount of value. Um, you know, not a lot of interest in uh, Kings Hawks at 10 o'clock, but uh, Pelicans Lakers should be fun, relatively highly owned. Um, they're not the best six games in the world, but what are we going to do? Take the night off? Come on. So first up, uh, we've got the Hornets hosting the Grizzlies. I've got the Hornets as seven-point favorites at home and the fifth highest implied total. Uh, not expecting to see Marc Gasol on, uh, on the back-to-back. -back. Uh, Tyreek Evans is supposed to play, so he's probably in play. Dwight Howard uh, picked up a tech last night and will likely be sus suspended so long as it's not rescinded. Uh, so that could open up some value, uh, potentially a lot of value for Willie Hernan Gomez if Cody Zeller can't go. Uh, but there's definitely a boost to uh, some of the Hornets guys uh, if Howard is out. So that's something to keep an eye on throughout the day. And we should have all of that news uh, relatively early since it's, uh, it's an early start. Uh, Kemba is at 8,600 on FanDuel, 8,200 on DK. Uh, it's a actually not the best matchup for point guards. Um, let's take a look and see if it's any better or worse than what I'm digging into. All right, so last 12 games starting point guards against Memphis. Fantasy points per minute. Yeah, relatively neutral there. Um, I think Kemba's pretty safe in cash. I probably wouldn't look to him much in a GPP. Um, I wouldn't see much exceeding, uh, you know, that 43-point window there. Uh, he's, he's fine, but uh, he's it's a better cash play for me. Jeremy Lamb uh, still looks great on DK. Uh, put up 29 last night. This is the third game in four nights, but... It is Memphis, so. Mm. Um, but I think Lamb looks great on, on DK. Uh, I think he's perfectly fine on FanDuel. Again, uh, more of a cash game play than a GPP at this point, uh, now that his price is up. Uh, Kaminsky, Zeller, Willie Hernan Gomez. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of an extra information, but those are three guys you definitely need to keep in mind. Um I like Kaminsky the most. I would expect him to get the most minutes out of anybody. And then uh, if Cody Zeller is out, Willie Hernan Gomez is going to look really, really good tonight. Um, as of right now, I've got all three of those guys in. So I would my focus would be on Kaminsky, particularly for GPPs. Uh, 4,200 on FanDuel, 4,100 on DK. Uh, with, that, with those extra minutes, no Batum um, and no Howard. Uh, Kaminsky could be in for a, a pretty big night. Not much else to like there. Uh, you just really want to focus on their big men and uh, see how that all shakes out. Now for Memphis, um, seven-point underdogs in Charlotte, uh, likely to not have... I did it again. Likely to not have... Uh, Gasol playing tonight in the back-to-back, -back. but uh, Evans is confirmed for tonight. Uh, he's at 8,000, uh, 7,900 on DK. Um, not a great matchup, but at the same time, that's a lot of that is probably based on Batum. I have no issues uh, using Tyreek Evans tonight. Uh, I wouldn't expect him to get scratched at this point. And I think he's really the only thing that I would I would want a, a decent part of on FanDuel. Uh, you can make a case for Deontay Davis, but I think that's just a GPP case. You never really know um, what his performance is going to look like. 3,800 and 3,300 on DK. So he's certainly worth flyers in GPP, but don't be uh, super confident in him. Now for DK... Um, I think Jermichael Green and uh, Andrew Harrison are, are in play as well. They don't have uh, the best prices on FanDuel, so I would avoid it. Like, Harrison, 6000 on FanDuel, 4900 on DK. 
that's that's a pretty big gap at that price range. So my only major focus would be Tyreek. Um, I'll have Deontay Davis in some GPPs. Uh, I probably won't have much else in this game, though. <laughs> Every time. I need to put, like, a sticky note on my monitor to tell me to stop typing damn thing up top. I need to change that color. Much better. All right, Orlando hosting the Philadelphia 76ers. Magic are seven-point underdogs at home. Um, Aaron Gordon expected to play. Jonathan Simmons not expected to play. <clears throat> um, you know, Orlando with by far the toughest matchup uh, defensively on the slate. All five positions are uh, in the bottom three in terms of matchup. But... Gordon at 7,500, no Simmons on the floor. Um, I actually think that's a pretty good spot for him. Uh, ignoring the fact that it's a tough defensive matchup, uh, I think Gordon actually looks pretty good on FanDuel. Um, and then with Simmons out, it's opening up a bunch of minutes, so I think that Hazonia is in play at 4,500. Um, he should be in line for a, a big uptick in minutes and uh, that should be enough to cover his value. So I definitely like him. Um, and you can talk me into Vooch at 8,800, but I'd really prefer to not have too much of the magic. Um, Philly's just too good defensively and still with a bunch to play for. So uh, unless we get news that like Embiid is going to sit or something, um, I would probably limit my Orlando exposure to Hazonia and... Uh, and Aaron Gordon. Shelvin Mack, I guess, can we could talk about him as a flyer in a GPP. Um, you know, in the last three games, 24, 26, and 27 minutes, uh, he's been over 20 fantasy points in all of those, one at 28 and one at 30. Uh, he's at 3,900, so I think that that's a, a worthy flyer in GPPs, but I wouldn't go uh, too crazy with it. Sixers, um, seven-point favorites, third-highest implied total. Uh, great matchup across the board. Uh, center's a little bit tougher, but I'll take my chances there with Embiid. I mean, I won't, but I would. <laughs> uh, ben Simmons at 10-4, 9,100 on DK. That's not, that's not something that I really want a part of. Um, it's going to be hard to, to extract any value out of that price point. A little bit better on DK, but it's just not for me. Uh, I feel the same way about Embiid. Uh, it's going to be hard to extract value at 5,500, or at 55 points to hit 5x. Um, he's probably a little bit better in cash, but I'm not really fond of both of their prices. They're priced too high. Um, I think Sarich could be interesting here. Uh, 5,900 on FanDuel. Um, that's just sort of a play against Orlando, though. Ultimately, I don't really like a ton here. Um, I think if I needed to play anybody with any sort of confidence, it would probably be Covington. Uh, I know that he doesn't grade out well, but, you know, a couple games in the 30s, one at the 40 spot, you know, going up against Orlando, no Jonathan Simmons, who's good on D. Uh, I think that would just be a benefit to the wings, so... You could potentially see um, a big night out of maybe Covington or Redick or Bellinelli, but with the prices on everybody else, the only guy that I'd really be looking at would be Covington, and I would want very little exposure to Simmons and Bede. I just don't, I don't see the upside there. Now, the Rockets uh, hosting the Detroit Pistons. I've got the Rockets as 10.5-point uh, favorites at home. Uh, they have the second highest implied total, and a uh, pretty good matchup. Um, Harden at 11-8, 11-6 on DK. Got to clear the throat here. Um, Harden looks good. Uh, I don't have much issue here. Detroit not the best at keeping people off the line. Obviously, Harden gets there a ton. Uh, I'd feel a little bit more comfortable, well, it's hard to say, like, 
in a perfect world, I would like AD a lot tonight. Um, but third game in a back-to-back-to-back is scary. So it makes me feel as though uh, Harden is probably one of the is probably the best stud on the slate. Um, I'd be very interested in Trevor Ariza in GPPs. Uh, Pistons give up a ton of uh, threes, which fits in for Ariza perfectly. Um, if he can get some steals or something, uh, he could be in for a good night. Chris Paul at 8,500. Uh, again, I don't see that as a, a spot where I can extract a lot of value, but I think that Paul would be relatively safe in a cash game tonight. The guy that I would really want to look at would be Clint Capella, 7,400 on FanDuel, 6,800 on DK. Coming off a bit of a stinker um, against Portland, but at 7,400, you know, he's got a 42-point game, which would be high in value. He's got a 54-point game, which would be high in value. Um, Pistons give up points to centers. Let's see uh, what the most recent splits would be. Last 12... Yeah, plus 3%, so that's a little bit of a boost. Um, I think Capella's worth a flyer in GPPs. Uh, I think Ariza is worth a little bit more than a flyer in GPPs. And uh, I think Harden is probably my favorite stud. I'm just very worried about AD making it through three straight games. Now, the Pistons, 101.75 implied total, which is 10th. Uh, not the best. Blake up to 9,100 now. I did it right over the gray one. Uh, 9,100 is a lot. Now, he has been playing a lot better, uh, coming off a 49-point game and a 54-point game. Um, I really liked Blake when he was at around 8,000. I thought there was some value there. Uh, I don't necessarily see it as much at 9,100. Um, that's a pretty big price point. Uh, I think his GPP ceiling is relatively limited now. Um, Drummond, 9,900 on FanDuel, 8,700 on DK. That is not something that I would be looking for. I don't like that matchup for him. Um, I really don't like anything for the Pistons tonight. I guess if I really needed to go for anybody... I would probably look to, I don't even know, nobody. I don't really like anybody on the Pistons tonight. That's best I can do. Pelicans, 113 implied total is first. Uh, they would be four-point favorites at home against the Lakers. This is their third game in three nights. Their fourth game in five nights. Their fifth game in six nights. Uh, it's just a tough stretch. AD went for 60 last night. Um, it's a good spot. Like, nobody can check him. 12-5 is pretty pricey. If you're confident that he can make it through this game, I think it's a really good spot. Especially with this third one being at home. Um... I don't have a problem having a good bit of him. I assume he'll be relatively highly owned, but I think that he's very risky. <laughs> Drew Holiday at 9,000. Uh, it's another day where I just, he's too expensive. I, I can't use him in a GPP with any sort of confidence. Um, he's a bit better on DK at that 7,800 price point. Uh, but for right now, I would much rather have AD and pay up than, than go for Drew at that price. Uh, Miritich at 5,500 I'm I'm all over he went for 28 last night which would be right at value I think there are options for him to really have a big night um, so he's somebody that I would be interested in in a GPP uh, Rondo you know a little bit more muted with, with Drew back but does have the ability to go off um Again, he's just a GPP guy for me. So I will likely have a pretty solid amount of AD, almost no Drew, and then uh, I'll, I'll funnel in Rondo and Miritich in GPPs. 
The Lakers, 109. Implied total is fourth. Lots to like here. The pricing on the Lakers is insane. Uh, and the matchup is really good, too. Uh, they, they should be the, uh, the most popular stack team tonight. Um, I will have large amounts of all six guys that you see there above that dotted line. Uh, KCP, Kuzma, Ball, Randall, Lopez, IT, they all look great. Uh, with this short rotation that they're using right now, uh, I, I can't imagine not having an overwhelming majority of Lakers. Um, I'd feel most comfortable rostering Randall and Brooke Lopez. Uh, I think that both of them probably have the highest floor. Uh, I would say that Kuzma probably has the highest ceiling at uh, 6,200 on FanDuel. Um, it's hard for me to prioritize anybody. I'm going to just have overwhelming amounts of them, and you're going to see them pop up on the optimizer in droves. I can't imagine not having... very significant ownership of all six of those guys that's the best spot on the board pelicans gotta be tired uh the lakers are going to be coming out here and you know jamming 30 plus minutes to all of these guys potentially uh the guy that i like the least is probably isaiah um but at the same time at 5600 you know if he gets it going he could really pop off um Kuzma, Randall, and Lopez are probably my top three, but I don't want that to be any indictment on all of them. They all look great. It's an amazing spot, amazing pricing for them tonight. I'm anxious to see what their ownership ends up looking like. Now, things that I'm not anxious about, talking about the Dallas Mavericks here. 95.5 implied total. They are eight-point underdogs at home against the Jazz. Uh, worst implied total. Uh, very, very difficult matchup. You've got Harrison Barnes at 5,700. Um, that's really the only guy that uh, I'd be like, oh, that's that's significantly underpriced. Um, with no Dennis Smith and no Wes Matthews, like the the ability for Barnes to get into like the 38 range, which is something he does with regularity, uh, is is certainly there. Um, I'll have a lot of Barnes uh, at the small forward position. And then the only other guy that I would really want to look at would be Berea. Uh, Berea is 5,600 on FanDuel, 5,500 on DK. Uh, you know, just with Dennis Smith Jr. being out, it opens up a, a lot more opportunity for Berea. He's been good. He's been solid. Uh, I think Berea would look pretty good in a cash scenario. Uh, after, other than that, I'm not really interested. Not much else looks good. Uh, Dallas is bad, and Utah is is very difficult to play against. Dallas with the 27th best uh, effective field goal percentage on offense. Awful. Utah, number one defensively. So good luck with that, Dallas. For the Jazz, uh, Favor is expected to play tonight. Um, you've got the Jazz at eight-point favorites in Dallas. Uh at least they've got a night off. You know, they're coming off a day's rest. Uh, Mitchell at 8,100, 7,500 on DK. I think he's pretty safe in uh, a cash scenario. Probably not a ton of upside. Um, it's just not that sort of game. Uh, there's not a there's not a ton to like here. Uh, pricing is pretty high. Like Gobert at 9,500, I'm not really comfortable with. Um, you can probably talk me into a little bit of Rubio at 7,400 on FanDuel. Uh, but really, the only guys that I would look at would be Mitchell, Rubio, and Favors. Um, and all of that would be, you know, very minimal. Uh, it's just, it's not that kind of game. Uh, Dallas with nothing to play for. Um, Jazz desperately want this win. So, uh, I think... I, w I don't see a ton of upside in GPP pricing for Utah, but they do feel relatively safe. Uh, it would be it would surprise me greatly if they had a uh, if they had a rough night tonight. Then finally, the star-studded affair known as the Sacramento Kings hosting the Atlanta Hawks 
in the toilet bowl. <sighs> Kings 107.5 implied total. Miraculously, two and a half point favorites at home. Um, Bogdan's supposed to be back. Uh, I don't even know what to make of this. As per usual, Willie Colley Stein looks really good on DK. 5,800 on DraftKings. Um, I have no problem using him. You can get up into like the mid to high 30s, which you'd be fine with. Other than that, you're flipping coins. Um, it's obviously a good matchup. So guys like De'Aaron Fox, uh, Bogdan, Scal, Willie Colley Stein. I, I have interest in all of those guys in GPPs in small doses. Uh, Buddy Heald at 7,000. Four straight games at and above value at that price. Bogdan back. I would understand if people want to play it. Um, I don't think that Buddy Heald is any sort of new player. Uh, I think he's just still the same guy that's not spectacular. Um, So high risk, high reward, I guess. You can probably get into the 40s on a, on a perfect scenario here for him. Um, it's probably not the risk I would be willing to take. I'd be a lot more interested in just taking Bogdan and hoping for the best. And then finally, the Hawks. Uh, no John Collins again. Damian Lee been getting a ton of minutes. He's going to grade out uh, pretty well here. 3,200 on DK. Uh, I, th- I think he's certainly worth a GPP punt. Um... And then we've got uh, Schroeder coming off the monster 55-point game. Just a real weird game for him. Uh, you know, it's a good matchup. Um, I'd be a little wary of Torian Prince at 7,500. Uh, but it's much like Bogdan, or much like uh, Buddy Heald, you know, had a couple games in a row there where he was just smashing value. Uh, if he keeps playing like that, you know, Sacramento should look like a pretty good matchup, so... I don't necessarily have a problem with him on a six-game slate, but temper your expectations. Uh, I don't have any problem going back to the Schroeder well, not even as a chase. I just It's still a decent price. I'll have marginal amounts of Damian Lee just to make lineups work. And then uh, I think Deadman and Muscala are both in play as uh, like lower-tier center options. Deadman coming off of 46. Um, and Muscala was fine, uh, you know, put up 23 in 30 minutes. Uh, if he gets the minutes, he should be relatively safe. I'd actually, I wouldn't mind Muscala as like a cash game center to, to make the rest of your lineup a little bit more steady. It's weird, there's not a ton to talk about here on this on this slate. Um, it's all pretty cut and dry. And everything sort of exists just in Lakerland. I'm anxious to see how much, how many guys pop up here. So I will be going live tonight, uh, starting at 6, so come join in on that fun. And I promise you, tonight is going to be fun. I don't know why I just switched out the 2. Get ready, this is going to be an overwhelming amount of Lakers. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six guys in like the top 13. <laughs> Alrighty. So if we can do that, let's take a look. Maybe not AD. Just to differentiate. What happens if I go straight to Harden? Then I get Lonzo. Hazonia, Kuzma. Yeah, like right here, Lonzo, Isaiah, Harden, Mitchell, Barnes, Hazonia, Kuzma, Kaminsky, Brooke Lopez. I love that. I love it so much. All over that. I would probably try to avoid... How good is Julius Randle at avoiding fouls? I would probably avoid lineups with uh, Randle and AD as the two power forwards if if he's sort of a, a foul guy. 
Uh, where is he? Yeah, middle of the pack. Yeah, I'd be a little weary of that. If AD draws fouls, there's a decent chance they come on Randall. <laughs> come on, Randall. Yeah, I like that lineup a lot. But I'm going to like most of these things because they're going to have a bunch of Lakers in it. And I think they're in a great spot. Now, the DK side is going to look a little bit different. They've got a little bit better pricing on FanDuel than DK, so this will be different. Randomness up. And go. Okay. Yeah, a lot of Damian Lee. That $3,200 price point will be interesting for somebody that's going to get, or has been getting, like, 30 minutes. And AD, much more playable on uh, on DK. So let's start with AD. We'll also grab Kuzma. Might as well grab Damian Lee to make things work. Jeremy Lamb is fine. I'm fine with Willie Cauley-Stein. Seems like that opens up Hazonia. Yeah, like right there. Isaiah, Lamb, Hazonia, AD, Brooke Lopez, Damian Lee, Kuzma, Willie Cauley-Stein. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Like this one too. Schroeder, Lamb, Kuzma, Kaminsky, Lopez, Lee, AD, Willie Cauley-Stein. Tonight's going to be fun. I think the lineup builds are going to be really neat. I'm cool with my Lakers stack, but I think everybody else will be too. That's all I got. It was a quick one today. Not too much to talk about. Uh, if you like the video, uh, like and subscribe. Um, hit me up with questions in the comments or on Twitter or on Reddit. Like I said, we will I'll be going live uh, tonight starting at 6. A little bit of news tonight, so I highly recommend tuning in to the live stream. It could be... Uh, it could be a real fun one. Uh, so that's all I got. Uh, best of luck tonight. Enjoy.